finish 2 Kings chapter 5 last time. Uh, we talked about Naaman's conversion. But we did not talk about Gehazi's conversion, or really more perversion, we might say. Uh, and so uh, 2 Kings chapter 5, and what has happened at this point is, of course, Naaman, this Gentile leper, the Syrian, has uh, he was informed by one of his servants who was captured from the land of Israel that uh, the prophet Elisha, who was in Israel, could heal his leprosy. So Naaman tells the king of Aram. The king of Aram sends word to the king of Israel. The king of Israel says, oh, we can't, uh, we can't do anything about this. This is, Am I God to kill and make alive? And tears his clothes in the process. Elisha informs the king of Israel that he should send Naaman to him. And at first, Naaman doesn't want to do what Elisha says. Elisha doesn't uh, really do what he expects. He doesn't come out and wave his hand over the leprous spot and make it disappear. Instead, he says, oh, go wash in the Jordan seven times. And you will be cleaned. And Naaman thinks this is an absolutely absurd idea. I'm not going to do that until his servants uh, reason with him and tell him that, no, you know, if the prophet had asked you to do a great thing, you would have done it. So go do this very, very simple thing. And sure enough, Naaman goes and he washes seven times in the Jordan. And the seventh time, it says that his skin was like a little child. There's a kind of a symbolic new birth. But we pointed out last time that it's not just Naaman's physical leprosy that's been washed away, but it is his inward paganism as well. He, now, he says and confesses in verse 15, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel, so please take a present from your servant. When Elisha refuses the present, uh, Naaman takes an alt, uh, enough earth to build himself an altar so that he may worship Yahweh in the land of Aram. And Naaman departs. But in verse 20, Elisha's servant Gehazi decides to uh, uh, write his own narrative, uh, write his own ending to the story, I guess. And so we're going to go ahead and read 20 through 27 of 2 Kings chapter 5. Have somebody read that, please. Okay, well, um, that's not too happy of an ending for Gehazi. Um, what is it that Gehazi does wrong here? <laughs> he lies? Okay, good. What else? He misrepresents his master? There's kind of a, I mean, you know, it's kind of analogous to Simon the Sorcerer in the New Testament. You know, you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. May your silver perish with you. Uh, of course, you know, Naaman's new to this. He doesn't get that. Elisha explains it to him and he goes away. But Gehazi, who should have known better since he was Elisha's right-hand man, decides, no, you know, he can't, uh, he can't just let this opportunity pass. You know, I mean, how much stuff does Naaman have with him? You know, does the text tell us? 
He had a good bit. Actually, if you back up to verse 5, we know what he has. Uh, he says, yeah. I mean, the original, the original uh, big donation that the king of Aram had sent was 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, and 10 changes of clothes. That's a pretty substantial amount, you know, to cleanse somebody's leprosy. Well, I guess you want to put a price on it. That's what it is. And Naaman comes and he offers this gift and, well, the converted pagan contrasts with the perverted Israelite. Gehazi doesn't agree with what Elisha has done. You know, you've spared Naaman by not taking from his hands. And uh, Gehazi even swears an oath, as Yahweh lives, I will run after him and take something from him. And Gehazi swears an oath. You could argue that since this is an oath for vanity, he takes the name of the Lord in vain here. Um, and what, what we have, of course, he greets Naaman, and Gehazi's lie is what? How much stuff does he take from Naaman? A little bit. He doesn't take...